Hey, what's up guys, YST here and welcome back to another Raid Shadow Legends video. And guys, we just got some breaking news about a guaranteed Void Legendary and a bunch of days with S tier champions for this 10x event to coincide with it. And I think you're going to be pretty shocked at the champions on this list. But let's just reveal the guaranteed champion and then I'll break down the individual champions that will be happening on specific dates. So, some of you may have guessed it, I was actually going to make a video about this because I seen a commenter, a big shout out to you, who actually guessed this would happen and I thought, yo, that makes complete sense with the implementation of Ultimate Death Knight and it is going to be Turvold, the clan boss killer. I really wish that Ultimate Death Knight would have had a secret skill alongside Turvold so they can go back and forth if they're in the same team as we know that in the adverts they really played off each other's banter and the training grounds and it was just a lot of fun to see their synergies. But we've got um, attacks one enemy two times, has a chance of placing a weaken. Un Ancestor's power places a 50% increased attack buff, crit rate and increased speed buff on this champion for two turns and grants an extra turn. And also attacks one enemy two times and damage increases according to the number of buffs on this champion. If this target is killed, we'll reset the cooldowns of this skill. Now, let me know in the comment section if you've got a Turvold and where you use them. But for me, traditionally, I don't personally have one. But the clan boss seems to be the place where he shines in those unkillable compositions, completely annihilating that demon lord. So, he's a pretty decent one and it will take, let me just not get this wrong. It will take 80 void shards to summon Turvold. But if you're already going for the champions in these events I'm about to talk about, then it could be a good way to guarantee yourself a Void Legendary alongside the rest of these champions here. Alright, so let's start off with the first batch. So this Friday, so tomorrow, we're planning to launch a 10x event to summon the following champions. First one is from the Shadowkin, and it goes by the name of Riho Bonespear, who I am luckily enough to have. I'm not going to spend too much time on these champions talking about it, because there's literally 15 champions to talk about. But she's a very solid cleanser. We've got the stuns, crit rates, decrease attack. She's a really solid champion. Um, block debuffs with the removing of debuffs too. And when receiving any debuffs, instantly transfers them from this champion to a champion's attacker. Will not transfer debuffs that cannot be removed. So yeah, she's definitely up there. If you guys know about Riho Bone Spear, she is S tier for sure. Now, the next champion is one that's changed my account, and I was actually going to make a video about this before this news came out. And it's Ursica Warcaller. Now, for me, she enables an amazing go second team because of her passive, where she decreases damage all allies receive from critical hits by 30%, and this champion will receive that damage instead. Now, when you start pairing it with the Bulwark Masteries, the Speedless Defenders, Guardian Sets, you start to mitigate a bunch of damage, allowing you to cut in, cleanse with potentially someone like a Mifrala, Duchess for that more damage mitigation, and then you come through with your Nuka. That's kind of one scenario. But I'll make a separate video on her over the weekend, maybe tomorrow. Also an ally protection and strengthen, we've got a bunch of debuffs here in the A2, and A1 block active skills. Next up on the list is back in the Shadowkin, and we've got Lady Kimmy. And she's a really solid Arena and Doom Tower champion. She enables so many things and her speed aura of 30% in Doom Tower definitely makes her one of the best for progression in that area of the game. Alongside the rest of her kit, decreased accuracy, decreased speed, block buffs, like you name it, this champion is just phenomenal. And probably out of the bunch I'll be wanting her the most, I do say in a lot of my shard pulling videos that she's in my top 3 at the moment in terms of who I want on my account. Next up, another champion I don't have, and it is one of three counter-attack champions in the game, and that is Valkyrie. And she's got this amazing shield that is next to none with the counter-attack buff to make sure you can practically double your damage against that Demon Lord. And yeah, even in teams in Arena, you may see that this passive makes her cut in, and she's just a pain to deal with overall, being a really solid tanky champion. Um, next up, you may have seen this champion in the 
faction games? No, the clan boss draft where Hell Hades absolutely crushed with Kyoku. And she's just phenomenal as well. Decrease attack. We've got the HP burns. We've got ally protection and block damage and grants an extra turn. She's an ultimate support champion as well. And really solid base stats here with the defense at 1.48k. All right, so let's head over to the next list. So that event there will carry from Friday until Saturday. And then on the Sunday, August 28th, there'll be another five champions. And then this is where it starts to get spicy. So if you're a spender, your money is about to go, guys. All right. So first one, can you guess it? It's going to be Hegemon, Mr. Go First. And basically, it comes down to this passive where he always goes first in each round, comes through with a nuke. Or if you've got a CC one, placing that block active skills, allowing the rest of your champions to come through and take over pretty much. Then we have got Necrit the Great from the Undead Hordes, and he's got every buff under the sun, but you may see in some of the best arena compositions that he enables it with these amazing passives with the ally protection buff that cannot be removed and the crazy shield that always pops up and annoys you in the arena, which it does to me. But yeah, I might summon a few void shards, I might get lucky, but I highly doubt it because I've only got a couple this weekend. Next up, we have got the best nuker in the game, arguably, and that is Trunda. This Sunday or is looking crazy. So Hydra Boss, she nukes. Arena, she nukes. You take her anywhere, she smacks, all right? Thunder Fies is here to stay and she's just next to none. Like, if you pull a Trunda, congratulations, because... She is a whopper of a champion. Our next one is a bit of a weird one to throw into this mix, and it is rhyming, a bit of rhyming here. We've got Countess Lix. And where is she? Demon Spawn, right? There she is. Now, this champion pairs with Astralon, who was a fusion champion, um, as you see here, with this passive. But she's really cool. She's got decreased speed. She's got the block active skills and the weaken. And she's just solid. Like, for me... PvP and Doom Tower is where she really shines. And of course, the Faction Wars, all of these champions are going to shine. Now, if we fast forward to Tuesday, so that one will last for another two days. Um, we are then going to start having Ninja Turtles. So we have got... Oh my god. Not these champions. We've got Chris the Ageless. Now, he enables one of the best or the best clan boss team in this game period. Um, Hydra Boss, he is probably the most sought-after champion. Arena, an absolute tank. He is just probably the best defense-based champion in the game in terms of full utility. We've got Provokes, Ally Protections, Decreased Speeds on the A1. He's just a phenomenal champion. Um, next one, a little bit of a weird one as well. And actually, there is a second one in Lizardman, and it is that Nekmofar again, who was a guaranteed champion. And he's one that I might also go for. Because he enables really cool teams in the Hydra boss with the increased speed, the filling of turn meters, the drop speed and leech debuff, and that AoE decrease attack to mitigate that damage coming your way. Um, next up, we have got. Alright, so we need to go into the Ogre in Tribes. And it's Gogo the Ogre, and pretty much what he's there to do is freeze. He is a freeze king. So I know a lot of people think that he's been power crept and stuff, but. He has utility, in my personal opinion. Would you rather have him than a Crisk? No, but he's decent, I guess. Um, next up is going to be a champion that I personally use on a weekly basis in my Hydra team. And it's Snake Track, one of the community-made legendary champions, Hedgehog. And he's really cool. We've got ally protection with reflect damage. The reflect damage is a bit underwhelming, but it deals a bit of damage here and there. We got decreased speed and a shield on the A2 and a decreased attack that always places as long as the target has a leech, which is in his passive. So he's really cool if you manage to summon him. And the final champion is going to be Ragash from the Skinwalkers as well. And yeah, we've got King from Tekken. He's a really solid nuker from what I've seen in gameplay. He's got a drop defense and stun, strengthen, increased speed and perfect veil. And he just looks amazing. And yeah, guys, that is going to be all the events coming up this weekend. Let me know who you're most excited to summon for. And are you going to be going for the... What's his name? Nagorio Fragment Fusion Epic Champion. 
I guess depending how easy it is, it's always good to get yourself a little champion. And don't forget to be logging in on a daily basis to get your ultimate death knight for free. Who I think is really solid for the starter people that first come into this game. And maybe some mid-game players and potential end-game fun. And I think that's what this champion's about. And I think they nailed it on the head of him in terms of the skills um, being really fun in the names and stuff. A bit quirky and different. I don't think he was ever intended to be the best champion in the game. I think the whole lead up was phenomenal with all of the creators doing interviews. Um, it was just a blast seeing it all unfold and then the big reveal. So yeah, that is going to be all for the video, guys. If you did enjoy it, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.